Hello, and welcome to our exploration of the transport layer. We are learning about the Internet Protocol stack, starting from the top, which is the application layer, and going through each layer top down. Transport layer, which is right below the application layer, provides a service of logical communication between processes. Remember from our discussions about the encapsulation that transport layer packets are called segments, which are the result of breaking application layer messages and adding transport layer header to them. These header fields add the process communication possibility after network layer host host communication delivery. There are two famous transport layer protocols for the internet, TCP and UDP. UDP only makes inter-process communication possible, but does not add any additional services. TCP adds reliable communication on top of best effort IP services. It also provides flow control and congestion control. Reliable delivery, flow control, and congestion control are basically all we can get in terms of guarantees using the transport layer of the Internet Protocol stack. Guarantees on delay and bandwidth are not possible. In our transport layer discussions, we will explore the mechanisms that make these services possible, and then how these mechanisms are implemented in the Internet's transport layer protocols. We will first define and explore multiplexing and demultiplexing, then discuss the details of the Internet's connectionless transport protocol, which is UDP. We will then discuss the basics of mechanisms that could be implemented to provide reliable data transfer over unreliable communication channels. Next, using those discussions, we explore the Internet's connection-oriented transport protocol, which is TCP. We first discuss the basics, like segment structure. Then, we will see how reliable data transfer mechanisms are employed in TCP. We will also explore flow control and connection management in TCP. Then, we will have an important discussion on congestion control. Topics like what is network congestion, how the links within networks may become congested, and when congestion happens, how do we get informed, and what kind of controls can avoid or relieve a congestion. We will then put these discussions in the context of TCP and see what has been employed in TCP to provide congestion control in the Internet.